Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. We are here with staff and faculty members from our School of Business Department at Whitworth, and they're really excited to share with you all there is to know about what you can expect as a business major or minor, or if you're just not really sure what you want to study, but business is of interest to you, we're going to be able to answer your questions today. My name is Quincy McHugh and I oversee all of our campus visit programs and on behalf of the entire university we want to welcome you to today's webinar. Now we want to make sure you can interact with us today and that we get your questions answered. So on the bottom of your screen, whether you are on a computer, phone, or a tablet, you should see three icons, chat, raise your hand, and the Q&A function. We are going to teach you how to use these so you are able to get your questions answered. The first one is the chat function. Um, right now, if you have a few moments, hopefully you do since you're with us today, go ahead and type in your first and last name as well as your hometown. We would love to see where you guys are from today. We'll give you just about a minute to do that. First and last name in your hometown. Great, looks like we have people from Spokane, Kent, Brewster, Yakima, all Washington people so far, great, Kennewick. Wonderful, Vancouver, excellent, Pullman, wonderful. Okay, we'll keep those coming. If you're just joining us, go ahead and type in your first and last name as well as your hometown in the chat. Okay, the next function that we might be using is the raise your hand function. So if our presenters have a question, they might ask you to raise your hand. So go ahead and raise your hand if this is your very first webinar you have done with the Whitworth Admissions Office. Okay, looks like four or five of you, this is your very first one, well welcome. And lastly, the Q&A feature. This is going to be the best way to get your questions answered. So at any time throughout this presentation, feel free to type in your questions in the Q&A feature, and we will either write our response to you, but most likely we'll be able to answer that question live. I want you to be able to meet our presenters today, so I'm gonna hand it over to Addie and the rest of our presenters to introduce themselves, and then we will get started. Addie, go ahead and take it away. Great, well, my name is Addie Grow. Uh, I work for the School of Business as the Assistant Director of Internships and External Relations. Hi, everyone. My name is Candice Correa, and I'm a professor at the School of Business, and I primarily teach accounting and taxation courses. Hey everybody, my name is Jordan Leesberg. I am an admissions counselor. I primarily work with students from Idaho and Southern California, but I'm also a Whitworth alum and I double majored in marketing and management while I was a student at Whitworth. Excellent, thank you guys. Now one thing we want to know before we get started is to have a little bit of understanding of what area of uh, the School of Business you are interested in. So you should see a poll coming up on your screen right now. Take a few moments to answer that question. What undergraduate program are you most interested in? I'll give you about 15 seconds to answer that. Okay, looks like we have just about everybody's answer. So We'll share these results. Um, so hopefully you guys can see this on your screen. Um, Addie and Candice, looks like the majority of our attendees are interested in business management uh, with marketing and accounting coming in second and then economics. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of where our students are coming from today. So Addie, let's turn it over to you. Go ahead and get started. Well, that's great. I'm so glad that so many of you are interested in management. And what's really cool about our program is that all of our students are majoring in uh, business administration. And then we have those individual concentrations, whether it's finance or economics or accounting or marketing and management for you to sort of specialize. Uh, the, the approach is, though, that you get a well-rounded business education. And so I think that it's really kind of the best of both worlds that you could take business administration and then also specialize in management or accounting. Um, so a great opportunity there for those of you who are interested in management. Also, those of you interested in management, we have a really incredibly good leadership minor. Um, and that actually works really well with the management major. Okay, well, like I said before, I'm Addie Groh. I want to move on actually to talking about our faculty. Jordan, could you move us there? 
incredible. Okay, so our faculty are amazing. I've worked at two different universities and in several different departments, and I have never seen such commitment to students. These faculty members are committed to students in the classroom and out of the classroom. What's really unique and special about them is that they bring an incredible amount of actual business experience um, to their teaching. So before they started teaching, they were out in the business world. And I wanna highlight just a couple of those members. So if you look, Professor Berquist, uh, top left, he is a professor of finance. Before he came to teach at Whitworth, he actually had 16 years of investment banking experience over in Europe, in Germany, and in London, I believe. Some of his employers include Morgan Stanley, um, Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers. He's incredibly accomplished, but he remains also amazingly accessible to our students. Uh, he's just an incredible individual. Another professor I wanna highlight, Dr. Yvonne Jocasio. She actually just led uh, a study abroad trip to Costa Rica and Panama. She is a professor of economics and along the way students were studying sustainability, economic development, poverty in those areas. The feedback from that trip was that it was life-changing, that it was eye-opening, and I know that a huge part of that is because of Dr. Von Jocasio. Um, Candice, would you mind highlighting a little bit about our accounting faculty? Sure. So I um, teach primarily in the accounting program, and there's two other professors. If you look on the top row there, Dr. Tara Lambert. Um, she also teaches uh, intermediate accounting, cost accounting, and accounting information systems. Michelle Lacuni is another accounting instructor, and she teaches intermediate accounting as well, managerial accounting, and looks forward to doing more governmental accounting in the program. We all come from uh, practice, and so myself, I worked um, Long story short, I started practicing law and then I started practicing taxation and really enjoyed that work and then ultimately started working for BDO, a large public accounting firm here in Spokane. Did that and then uh, started my own practice on the side when I uh, had the great fortune of starting to teach and ended up becoming a full-time gig. So here I am, but that practical experience I think uh, helps all of us tremendously because we can use stories and provide students with those stories that make the what make the concepts and um, items that you're learning in class much more meaningful and rich. So that uh, is helpful and a lot of us still practice on the side even as we teach. So I do a lot of compliance work still and um, some litigation work as well, which is kind of fun to share with students along with uh, academic research that we're doing on the side as well. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I come from primarily the public sector. Uh, Michelle Lacuni also practiced in the public sector before going into academia. And then Dr. Tara Lambert practiced primarily in the private sector. So we all have um, a few differences to our background, which I think helps make your education really diverse. Addie, I'll pass it back to you. That's great. Thank you, Candice. And then also, I know Jordan, you studied uh, both management and marketing. Uh, would you highlight maybe a professor from one of those fields? Yeah, so I, I kind of like to piggyback a little bit on uh, what Candace had said about the faculty members at Whitworth using their experience uh, to help teach the students in the classroom. And one of my favorite uh, professors and storytellers is uh, Dr. Robert Buckham, who you see in the top left. Uh, he's a management professor and he has uh, a really just wide array of experience from like doing consulting work, which he still does now, all the way back to like working in the mining industry. So um, I really enjoyed my class with him and he really focuses on sharing his experiences and learning about the students and what they want to accomplish and helping them get there. Uh, on the marketing side, David Sloan in the bottom right hand corner, he was one of my favorite professors. Uh, he's, he's a younger guy and has a lot of energy and so his classrooms are always very interactive and fun and exciting. A uh, couple, couple different classes I had with him, um, both had projects where we would actually go out into the Spokane community and take what we were learning in the classroom and uh, went out and actually practiced that. And so that experiential learning aspect is 
definitely a common theme across all of Whitworth, but um, something that's really prominent in business that I really appreciated. For sure, Jordan, that's, that's exactly our approach. Well, uh, let's continue on our business advisory board. So like we just emphasized, uh, practical experience, real world experience, experiential learning, those are some of our really strong values. And to augment that even more, we rely on our business advisory board. This board is comprised of incredibly accomplished professionals. Uh, they're all personally connected to Whitworth. We have relationships with each of them. They're CEOs, CFOs, COOs of different companies, businesses, and organizations. They're also incredibly accessible. Um, I've had lunch with quite a few of them. And what's great about it is they're not only advising our entire faculty and administration, about what we should be teaching students, about how we could restructure curriculum, about programs that we should offer, but they're also willing to mentor students. They're also willing to connect students to, to different internship opportunities. They're just uh, an incredible resource that I can't talk enough about. Um, the Business Advisory Board, we just absolutely love them. Let's go on to the next one. Our clubs and activities. Uh, we have a very active student population. They seem to like hanging out with each other, even outside of the classroom. And so we have a lot of different club and activity opportunities. One that I'll highlight, even though not many of you chose finance as the, the concentration that interests you most, I still wanna talk about our Whitworth Student Investment Group. This is a really strong club of ours. Uh, it's led by Professor Berquist, who I talked about earlier. Um, this is sort of geared towards finance, but students from all concentrations are welcome and it's an incredible opportunity to get real world experience managing an endowment of what started as $100,000. Uh, these students have been investing it, they've been managing their own internal organization themselves, and they have grown that endowment to about $140,000 right now. Um, I know students from the econ concentration, students from the accounting concentration, and from the management concentration who are all participating in that club and developing some really incredible real world, real world uh, skills. And in fact, some employers uh, will put on their job descriptions that we were student investment group experience preferred because it is a really, really, really powerful program. We also have the Balance Your Bucks Peer Financial Education Program, and we partner with STCU, the Spokane Teachers Credit Union, uh, to run that financial education program. And that, again, is another opportunity for students to, to get invested and to spread financial literacy. Really, we just have great faculty advisors dedicated to each of these clubs, and really, they're all quite successful. The, the photo features our CFA team, um, that's from a couple years ago. We actually just had this year, though, our sixth regional consecutive win for the Chartered Financial Analyst Competition. And I think a lot of that is because of the strong foundation that students get in the Whitworth Student Investment Group. Can we move on to professional development? Yes, this is my favorite space. This is where I focus most of my energy. Um, and that's primarily because the top bullet point internships is pretty much the key to securing career opportunities after your college education. Internships convert to career options. Um, we know that from the data, and so we really lean into that hard. By graduation, I believe about 80% of our students will have completed an internship, and, and that's a great benchmark for us. It's a really high goal, but that's what we aspire to. So my job is to connect students to internships, to support them through the application process, whether that's reviewing their resumes and cover letters, or that's helping them practice their interviewing skills, um, I'm there with them all along the way. I also procure internship. So I go out into our business community and I find businesses who don't have an internship program and I help them implement those. So I'm constantly out there trying to connect students to get them that experiential learning. Um, I want actually, Candice, could you talk about the VITA program? Of course. So the VITA program, the Voluntary Income Tax Assistance Program, is a service learning course that's primarily experiential. So what that means essentially is, is that junior year, 
And this year we actually invited sophomores to do it the first time to see how that would go. But typically juniors who have had introduction to taxation and completed that uh, course then have the skill set to go out and prepare individual tax returns. The IRS has this incredible um, program. They partner with a lot of nonprofits here in Spokane. They uh, partner with primarily AARP sites as well as United Way. And we send our stud students out and to the various different sites and they get to prepare tax returns for military, for elderly, for um, new immigrants. It's pretty incredible um, the a number of community members that they get to touch. And they also get to take those concepts that they're learning in class and put them to use, which makes their education a lot more meaningful. And in conjunction with that, a lot of times what I find after they complete the VITA program is that they learn that it's not just their accounting skills that are helping them, but also their other liberal, liberal arts skills. So their communica communication classes, their um, philosophy classes, the core classes, all of that kind of joins and they get to realize that in meeting these different individuals from the community, it's not just accounting that they can help with, but also communicating that to them and making the law make sense. And so it's a really great program and a lot of our accounting students get to participate in it. Typically, um, they prepare over about 5,000 returns in the Spokane area and commit to about over $500 or 500 hours collectively in terms of the number of volunteer hours. So if you can come to Whitworth, please say, see me and sign up for this course. It's a great, great opportunity to get some experience. Addie, back to you. Thank you. I definitely, I absolutely always advise students to, to pursue that opportunity. It's just, it's incredible. Um, in addition to that, we do all sorts of other uh, different programming. I wrote at the bottom and on and on because literally, if something appears that would be valuable for our students in terms of professional development and experiential learning, that's what I'm here uh, to help facilitate. The mock interviews, we actually just had to switch them to virtual mock interviews uh, because of this COVID season. And so we're still persevering even in this virtual era with making sure that our students are getting the professional development that they need. We're going to talk a little bit more about career treks, I believe starting on the next slide. Awesome. So our career treks are an annual uh, recurring program that we do. We have one career trek in the fall of every year where we go and we explore different businesses, companies, and organizations in the Spokane area. And then we also have a career trek in the spring where we take students to visit those companies, organizations uh, in Seattle. The way we structure those career treks is by focusing on where our graduates are because then we can make these visits much more personal. There is a much higher touch, uh, more individualized sort of attentiveness that we get at these different companies when we have worked with our WSB alumni to help organize them. And we have WSB graduates everywhere. This doesn't even cover um, all of the different places where they work. And so, for example, when we want to go visit Costco, um, we can connect with Tyler and Taylor, who I believe, Candace, were they your students? Oh, I think you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry for the technical glitch. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, they were. They were my students and they are phenomenal. They come back every year and they speak in a number of our courses. And so it's great to hear about what's currently going on with um, Costco. I actually just reached out to them and asked them how they were handling um, the coronavirus and the influx of work. And so they're definitely keeping busy and trying to innovate as we speak. So it's exciting to have that direct contact. Exactly. And so that's the kind of relational connectivity we have to each of these different organizations. And so when, when I say we go on a career trek, we're really just visiting personal relationships that we've already formed years and years ago and that 
we continue to cultivate and that's part of my job. Um, can we go ahead and move to the next slide? I believe it should be the video of our career trek. Yes, so this is our trip to Seattle. Is there sound, Jordan? Yeah, let me let me see. Bear with me for one second. Totally fine. Not that I can't handle silence, but I'll go ahead and fill in uh, for just a minute. What we typically do on the Seattle Career Trek was we choose four different paths and students can choose. We always uh, modify those paths based on student interests. So uh, depending on if we have computer science tech leaning students who are doing maybe the business option for computer science, we'll have a computer science track. Um, we'll also have a more corporate management track for students who are interested in that. We might have a marketing track or maybe a finance econ track. And we always choose different companies to suit each of those different student interests on those different tracks so that you're, you're visiting the companies that matter most to you or that interest you most. Um, we really try to elevate the value add for each student in that way. The Trek is an amazing opportunity for alumni and current students to connect in the business community in Seattle in hopes of building really long lasting relationships for mentorship and future opportunities. When I finished up at Whitworth, um, I spent a few years trying to learn what sort of skills I needed to develop outside of college. With the Trek and, and at Whitworth today, um, that opportunity is given to students before they graduate. What would I say to a student on the fence about going on the Trek? Do it, 100%. So if it gets you the job that you want, it's definitely worth it. And it's a great opportunity to network with other students as well, even if you don't find the job or the company you want. You get to meet other seniors, other juniors that are interested in the same fields. What made me go to the track is I wanted to view uh, what was out there. Um, I kind of wanted to get a glimpse of how the industry is and start my network of engineers. I think the track opportunity gives people a, a visibility to what we do for a living and how we do the work and how that then relates to their education and their work. Welcome to the Spring Group! I like to help the students just to give them a vision of kind of what could be next. To be able to have that touch point with students so they can understand how they can progress their career after Whitworth, um, I think is my way of giving back and helping students that were in my shoes. So showing them that corporate America is not the big bad beast of the world, but you can actually do some really cool stuff here um, is really important to me because I thought nonprofits were the only way to go and I'm learning that that's not the only opportunity for me and there are some companies with incredible culture doing good in the world. There are so many different opportunities in Seattle and we have a lot of alums that work in different companies. So getting to know different people is a great opportunity to, you know, broaden your horizon and you never know who you would meet. And to me it was a great experience because coming in I had no idea what I wanted to do. I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of great opportunities throughout my career, but all of them came at someone giving me a chance. There's an incredible network of Whitworth alums that are working in a wide variety of businesses, and some of the most powerful businesses in the world. Alums want to share that with students. We want to provide that insight, that knowledge, that information, the mistakes we've made, the things we've learned, the success we've had. That's all information that can be provided. Not only that, but then the opportunity to actually see the inside workings of some of these companies is, is a phenomenal opportunity to then figure out what's the next move. And that's what Trip really brings to the table.
Awesome. Well, it is an incredible opportunity. The career tracks are uh, so meaningful and impactful for students. It has shaped so many different students' decision making when it comes to what career do I want. In fact, I've heard a lot of students say, I didn't even know that position existed or I didn't even know that opportunity was a possibility. Um, and so it's really just uh, a very informative and really a great bonding experience too. Uh, this year's Seattle Trek was canceled. So instead we actually arranged uh, Zoom sessions similar to this, but a little bit more interactive with Nordstrom, with Amazon, with Visit Seattle, with Trinet. Um, I have one today with West River Group and Agman for finance students. The, the alum who you saw in that video are still willing to go above and beyond to connect with students, even if we couldn't physically make it over there this year. And I think that speaks to just the value that they feel the Trek brings for the students, but also it's really a joy for them to get to give back to students in that way. So we're sad to have missed it this year, but we're definitely planning uh, for next year already. <laughs> so, hey, yes. Patty, sorry to interrupt you. I just want to jump in. We have a question here from the right. Q&A. Um, do you stay overnight in that city for your career trek? And how do you choose what city you go to? Great question. So the Spokane one, we visit because we're in Spokane and that is just a day trip in the fall. Um, we choose a day that there are no classes uh, during fall break so that students don't miss out on anything. And then we go tour roughly six to eight Spokane companies. For the Seattle trek, that's always in the spring. We go during spring break. We do stay overnight. Um, this year, the fee was only $100 and there were lots of sponsorship uh, opportunities for students. And that covers your hotel, your food, um, and everything for those two nights that we stay in Seattle. The reason we have to commit to two nights in Seattle is because obviously um, there are many more companies to visit. And also we have a ton of alum over there who also join us for an alum networking event. So even if we don't get to visit, every single company where our alum are working, the alum will often come to us and we'll have a large gathering, a networking event for everyone to hang out while we're in Seattle. We are looking in to other treks, potentially down to California. We do a trip to Oregon as well, but that's through a slightly different department. So there are other treks. The reason we chose Spokane and Seattle though is because one, that's where we are located um, and to where most of our alum have gone off to work professionally. High concentrations in those areas for us and a way to keep it very affordable. Any other questions, Jordan? Uh, not yet, but I think this is really uh, now the time when we'd like to open it up for all you folks to, to ask any questions that you have. Uh, what opportunities are there to double major? You, you want me to take that? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. There are tons. And so, like I said, we have our major is business administration. And then we have students concentrate in one of those specific concentrations, whether that's finance or marketing, um, econ, etc. Then you can also choose to go outside business and have a second major in something like sociology or psychology or uh, English literature. Um, graphic design is another popular one for students who are pursuing marketing. So what I typically advise students to do is, you know, talk to your faculty advisor, see what is manageable credit wise, um, and then think about really good uh, pairings. So like I just said, a marketing concentration might pair really well with a graphic design or a psychology or sociology concentration. So there are plenty of opportunities. I think it really just depends on the credit load. And Candace, maybe you should talk about uh, accounting because accounting has some different kinds of considerations. Yeah, Addie, I'll just piggyback off of what you were saying. For accounting, um, for folks that concentrate in accounting, we see a lot of people double concentrating because a lot of folks that want that accounting degree want to be eligible to sit for the CPA exam. And to be eligible to sit for the CPA exam, you need 150 credit hours by the time you graduate. The nice thing at Whitworth, because of our JAN term, 
is that we have students that can complete 150 credit hours within four years time. So that's, um, most universities don't have that feasibility because you're on two semesters or you're on using a quarter basis. So that um, helps our students save some money in terms of tuition. And uh, the benefit of combining accounting with management is that you can have two concentrations, graduate with two concentrations and get to that 150. Um, a lot of times too, we see um, folks in the management concentration that want harder skills because oftentimes those people in upper management positions have some sort of accounting and or finance background. And so, some students will start off as management concentrations and then they end up adding accounting and or finance. So lots of opportunities within the school of business itself, lots of opportunities to even add concentrations or majors um, or different treks um, outside of um, the school of business. So let me just give you an example of that. We have a number of students that are in psychology or computer science and they've added a business major or even they've added a business minor. Um, and that works nicely together because as a psychologist you may want to open up your own practice and so you want that business perspective. Similarly, as a computer scientist, if you end up uh, practicing independently. You want that business knowledge, or even if you go to work for a corporation, you want to understand the inner workings of a business. So um, you see it all the time. Most of my advisees have double concentrations, and it's very common. Yeah, and so I think that is one of the, the differences that enable students to have that. It, se it seems like a double major, but we have made a double concentration. Um, and we do that really so that you can concentrate into um, rather than having to double up on anything. It makes it really, really feasible to do a double concentration within business or you could go outside of business to grab a second major if you're really proactive. Great, okay, we've got some more uh, questions coming in here. I don't know if either of you will by chance have the answer to this, but let's give it a shot. Uh, what percentage of our graduates get uh, either an MBA or a master's in tax? So Maddie, or I'm sorry, I'll, I'll go ahead and take the tax question because uh, that's probably more in my, um, in my um, environment. The, um, the number of students I would say, so typically we have a small group of students graduating in accounting in fact, that's what how Whitworth is able to keep their small student to teacher ratio. So my largest class, for example, is 30 students, which is a core business class. My upper division classes range anywhere from about 10 students to maybe 16, 20 students. So the great thing with that is that you get that one on one um, contact with your professor. You get to know them. You get to know other students in your cohort, so to speak because you move through those upper division courses typically together as a group. I would say for accounting, most of our students um, go into practice first. They wanna get some of that basic fundamental understanding and then they go back and get a master's in accountancy and master's in tax. Um, and there's all sorts of different variations of that right now, depending on what schools you go to. We have a number of students that are doing our step up program into our MBA program. And so the nice thing about that is that you can start it actually your senior year and finish your MBA sooner than you would be able to normally. So a lot of students take advantage of that. Um, but in terms of the masters of tax, our students don't have to go get that because they graduate with 150 credit hours. And so they can jump right into those positions without having to have that master's where at most other universities, you have to go get your master's in order to get 150 credit hours just to even sit for the CPA exam. So hopefully that answers your question. Of course, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free um, to ask. Great, and I can, um, I can say that 14% of our 2019 WSB graduates went on to graduate school right away. Um, and I think part of that is because of the benefits of the MBA Step Up program that we have partnered uh, with them for. And so what that is is students can take MBA level courses up to, I believe, six credits while they're earning their undergrad, and it counts in, in both areas. 
So I think uh, one of the MBA directors said it's basically like giving yourself a $5,000 scholarship to finish your MBA. Um, and so it does give you that a little accelerated start and discount on earning your MBA after graduation. So we did see an increase in uh, students choosing to do that path uh, last year, and we'll see what the numbers are this year. Great. A uh, few more questions coming in here. Uh, do you know by chance, Addie, which, I know we on our last slide we talked about um, the really high career outcome for graduates. Do we have that broken down by specific concentration or is it just Whitworth School of Business in general? It's not broken down by different concentration. No, um, that is all of the concentrations together. And I think it would be really difficult to separate it by concentration because like we've been talking about, so many students double concentrate. Um, so we don't just have finance students, we have finance management or marketing management or you know all of those. So I think really the Bachelor of Business Administration graduates, that's their general outcome. Yeah. And speaking of that, the double concentration, do you by chance know what, what that would look like in terms of of a diploma? Like, is that one bachelor's degree with two concentrations? Is it two bachelors? How does that work? We label it as a bachelor of business administration, concentrations in, and then you can highlight both of those. And it actually works really well on a resume when you're applying for jobs later on. Um, it's a pretty clean look and people understand what that means. The BBA is a pretty common uh, degree that you can earn that does indicate to employers a well-rounded business education and that is the feedback that I get from employers who I talk to. They understand that that means a student had a little bit of exposure to many different facets of business education um, and that they've been able to concentrate in, for example, marketing and management um, and that helps you sort of hit the ATS software with both of those terms. Yeah, and to kind of um, piggyback on that for another question that's come in here, that's what kind of skills will be available to learn if you might want to start your own business? Um, so I know just uh, I'll kind of high level overview talk about this and I'll let you jump in, but we've talked about this a number of times. The benefit of the, the way that the program is structured is you really get exposure to all the different um, fields within business, whether it be accounting or finance or marketing management economics. And when I was a student, I know one thing that I heard um, often was the reason for that is you need to be able to quote unquote talk at the table, whatever field of business you go into, you need to be able to understand what's going on in other departments and not just in your own world. So um, whether it's starting your own business or you want to go into a specific field of business, it's important to know all the different facets that make that world up. Absolutely, Jordan. I don't think I could have said it better, actually. Um, in addition to that, as part of our curriculum structure, we also have a business plan class, which sort of takes on that entrepreneurial focus. And we also encourage and support students to participate in the Northwest Entrepreneurial Competition. Uh, we hosted that for several years before we handed it off to be hosted by a different university. I'm sure we'll get it back at some point. We also, this last year, just facilitated our first startup weekend, which is basically like a heavily entrepreneurially focused intense weekend facilitated by two professionals from eTales. Um, they're an e-commerce company no nearby. And they basically ran the students through uh, an intense week of pitching ideas and then doing market research doing a business plan, having a go-to-market strategy, and then the students presented that at the end of the weekend to a panel of judges. And it was very entrepreneurially driven. And I think the feedback from students was, we have to do this every year. Could we do it twice a year? I never thought I could run a business or put an idea out there and have it work. But throughout the weekend, they gained a ton of confidence in their sort of entrepreneurial mindset. And I think it was because of the leadership um, from the e-tails professionals, but also we had uh, entrepreneurial coaches from the Spokane area come and work with the students as like a team coach to get each of them ready for those final presentations. Awesome, and then going back to the trek, I have a question here. Are there any requirements to be able to go on the trek? 
Yes, there is an application process. And I was part of the interview committee for that and deciding which students are able to come. Um, the requirements are that you do the application, you submit a, a resume and a cover letter, your reasons for wanting to join. And then through the interview process, we're basically assessing who is going to represent Whitworth well, who has a clear purpose for wanting to be on this track, who's taking it seriously. Um, and we often prioritize juniors and seniors because they're the ones who are really about to launch into the, the employment market. Um, but I think really we, we don't have strict requirements like GPAs or anything like that. It's really about who's going to take this seriously, who's going to represent Whitworth well, um, and who really needs the opportunity in a lot of ways as well. Great. Do you know of any athletes who have been able to do a double concentration while they're at Whitworth? Yes, it is difficult. Um, I know one baseball player right now who's doing a double concentration and he's a part of the Whitworth Student Investment Group. I think he might be the busiest person in the world, um, but he seems to think it's a really fun way to spend his time. It is possible, though I, I mean, I do think it is it's a challenge, so be prepared for the challenge. But the faculty are very accommodating and understanding. And I mean, we know our student athletes basically are working a full-time job. So I think that the faculty will do their best to advise students to make it possible. Candace, do you have any examples from your accounting advising? Yeah, I have a ton of advisees that are athletes and doing two concentrations. It's very doable. And actually we see our athletes excel in the classroom. I think because of the scheduling aspect of it, they have to be very um, accountable, right? Um, for practice and then to ensure that they're getting all their homework done and so forth. And so they all rise to the occasion and um, we've seen them do some pretty great things um, and so that you can be successful in the classroom and be successful out on the field and do well so i'd highly recommend that if you want those two concentrations go for it yeah and there's no reason to not go for it we have another question um, that's asking we i know we've already talked a little bit about um, class sizes but asking about just different um, different homework or maybe coursework style and how that varies across classes. Well, I know Candace will be able to speak to accounting, um, but I like what you talked about um, earlier, Jordan, with David Sloan's coursework. Um, a lot of it is, hey, you learned about this in the class, I want you to go try that theory or try that method out in your own um, you know, circle. And so I think that we try to do a lot of applied homework um, in each of the different courses or concentrations. I think too, that we try to make it really practical and hands-on um, so that whatever group project you're working on is at the end, a deliverable that you could use as a sample or a reference for when you're in a, you know, a job interview so that you can talk about, well, the project I did in market strategy was, assessing this company and I learned these things about it. So I think that the homework that the professors are assigning is really just geared towards whatever real deliverables are going to be expected of you out in the professional world. Um, when I taught a professional writing class, that's what every single assignment was. It was what kind of a deliverable would you actually be expected to write if you were employed at a certain kind of company. And so we're just practicing as close as we can, the real world um, tasks that you'll have to do in the professional space. Candice? Yeah, in terms of accounting, we do the same. Um, I can say that, for example, in my financial accounting course right now, which typically has freshman and sophomore level students, that um, we learn a lot of the foundational concepts early. And right now we're taking a step back and I'm having students um, watch a lot of different clips that I've put together, interviews and uh, of economists, financial accountants and analysts to understand what's going on with the larger picture right now. It's such a rich time to take what we've learned about the balance sheet and the income statement and go, how does that apply to the real world right now? Why are some of those accounts on there so important to be looking at and analyzing? 
And um, so that's just one example. In my upper division tax classes, introductory uh, to taxation, we do a number of tax returns and we do them by hand because I want students to understand the flow. I never did that when I was in school and I wish my professor had done it. And so that's something that I've implemented to be more practical. We also do some research memorandas because um, researching is something that you do in the real world and I want you to have practical experience with that. So when a boss later on down the road goes, hey, can you look into this issue and write me a memorandum, you can do that. Um, I'm trying to think our audit class that Dr. Lambert teaches, they actually help with the audit at Whitworth University. So that's really fun and exciting for them. And then they present on their findings to a panel at the end of the semester. So lots of opportunities within each class to um, get hands-on experience. Addie? Yeah, I think that basically sums it up. We really try to pay attention to what employers are asking their employees to do, and then we just try to make sure our students are prepared to do that. I think a large part of that information comes from our business advisory board, too. Um, when they came one year and said, we need employees who can write, we need employees who can communicate, we said, okay, and so we implemented courses like professional writing. We made sure different faculty members were, uh, you know, emphasizing the written products at the end of projects, you know, more fully. So anytime we hear employers need X, we just address that issue as quickly and as effectively as possible in the coursework that we assign. Jordan, any more? Yeah, it looks like we've just got a couple more here. One is, um, it's probably best for you, Addie, are, are paid internships available? Oh, my goodness, absolutely. Um, unpaid internships are difficult for me to strongly encourage students to do. I think our students should be compensated for the work that they do. And so I really try to advocate on behalf of our students for paid internships. Um, and there are lots of different ways that I can help to inform employers that they can afford paid internships. There are different um, programs or reimbursement opportunities for those employers. So anytime that an internship is unpaid and I see it, I will most likely follow up with that employer and encourage them to think of different ways to compensate our students. Um, absolutely, paid internships are my priority for students. We're, we're paying for college right now, so I feel like they should be earning uh, whenever they're putting in that kind of work. So students can do simultaneously an internship for credit and for pay. So they can be working towards their degree, earning credit for it, I think up to nine credits towards their um, degree, and they can also be earning money for it. And that's what I try to, that, that's what I try to encourage and promote most strongly are those paid internships. Great. Any last questions? There's a question in the chat, actually, that might be good. Um, this student is asking if there are any prerequisite classes or anything that they should work on, perhaps in high school, like any AP economic courses or anything that you might suggest from that perspective. I'll start in terms of accounting. Um, there's nothing that you have to do before you come to Whitworth, um, but if you want to get a jump start, I do have a number of students, more and more it seems like, in that introductory financial accounting course that say, I've already had accounting class in high school. And so usually the first part of the semester might be a little bit of a review for them. Um, and that helps them just be familiar with some of the larger concepts. So if you can take advantage of an accounting class, if you're interested in accounting, or if you're interested in econ, an economics course in high school, that would be a great opportunity, but you definitely don't have to. Addie, do you want to say any more on that? Yeah, I think I would echo that, that you definitely don't have to. It could be really great, and I think it does actually help with the transition to college. If you have even just that little bit of, um, background knowledge or you've heard these terms before it can certainly help with that first semester of oh my gosh i'm in college now and yet some things sound a little bit familiar because you've been through it a little bit before um, and then obviously because it's a college level course you'll move beyond that knowledge pretty quickly but it could be a good uh, helpful stepping stone but 
I don't think that it's necessarily required of anyone. The, the one thing I would say, and this isn't, isn't required by any means either, but I always encourage students that I talk to um, from an admission standpoint who are interested in business is uh, if your school has DECA or FBLA, those can be really, really helpful programs to, to get involved with if you know um, you want to study business, or even if you're just interested and you're not sure, uh, those can be a really big help. Excellent. Well, I think we are all out of time, but you guys had an excellent question. Thank you so much for your participation today. Thank you to Candice and Addie for your time as well. Um, I wrote this in the chat, but if you have any additional questions for our School of Business after today's webinar, feel free to email them to admissions at whitworth.edu, and we'll be sure to get them to the proper faculty or staff members who can answer your questions in detail and help you figure out what you might be interested in. We hope that you join us for future webinars. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon and we hope you have a great afternoon. Bye everybody.